So the first step in this assembly is to fit this uh, rear girder onto the wall. And for that, we'll be using this 2x4 timbers and using it like a sliding guide. I'll be using offcuts of this pallet wood to form ridges on the 2x4. And here you can see that it helps us in sliding the girder up in the place. So next I'm just using a cordless drill to mark the hole positions. So I'm just drilling in like 1cm or so into the bricks. And once I got this layout marked on the bricks, we slide it down the rear girder again. And here you can see that I've marked it with a sketch pen. So the idea is to drill in sleeve anchor bolts and the sleeve anchor bolts can take the weight of the girder. So I'm just using a rotary drill and going through the holes. And once that's done, the next day, we put in the sleeves onto the holes. So here I'm going to give all the anchor bolts uh, a treatment with a grey primer followed by some black matte paint. So next using a hot glue gun, I'm going to attach the square washers over the holes. This, is, uh, this will help in two things. One, it will help in keeping the wood away from the wall by around 2mm or so. And secondly, it will also help in keeping the sleeves in place within the hole. That is, the sleeves don't come out when I use the anchor and tighten it out. The bolt with a small washer which it comes in goes and sits in on top of the square washer and the whole thing gets punched into the hole and then I just tighten it with a socket ratchet. So you just need to apply enough pressure to make sure that it sits tightly against the wall. And while doing this, you would get scuff marks on your square washers which I'll address it later. So that's the first piece of the girder attached onto the wall and it looks really nice now. So here I got some 2x4 timbers which I'm going to use as supports for the rear post. So these will get hammered into the wall and uh, basically it's the same concept that if you drill the hole, punch the sleeve anchor in, tighten it up with a socket ratchet and the only additional thing I've done over here is I gave it a dash of black paint on the holes and then I went ahead and patched in all the scuff marks on the washers as well. So here you see me marking out the exact position of the rear post. So I measured that and then used a circular saw and cut everything to size and treated the ends with a wood preservative as well. So I'm using a CPZ66Z uh, anchor mechanism system to hold these uh, rear posts in place. I got a separate video, so if you're interested, you could check that from my video channel or I'll leave a link in the description below. For extra rigidity, I'm using these black timber screws to hold the posts against those nine support blocks. And this is how it looks now with the posts and the rear girder. The next step is to fix this APB100-150 Simpson post base support on the front four posts. Again, I have another video in my channel and I'll leave a link in the description below for that. The basic idea is once you have the uh, plate installed on the post, you just screw it in place onto the concrete pier. Make sure that all the posts are plumb as always. I'm installing this 2x4 timber over here which is going to act like a temporary support and it'll also make sure that the posts are in a line. The next step is to mark the seat support's height. So that's 50 centimeters off from the floor and I'm just holding it temporarily with clamps and some 2x4 timbers. So here I'm going to use a long stretch of 2x4 uh, timber to make sure that both the seat supports are the same height. To fix the seat supports onto the post, I need a coach bolt which is around 280mm in length. And the max for that is the 2x4s are like 40mm each plus the 150mm for the 6x6 post. So for that I'll be using my cordless drill to mark the position and then I'll use a corded drill with the straight jig to drive in the full length of the hole. Here I'm cutting in the extra length on the coach bolt with my angle grinder and then I'll use my orbital sander and just smooth on out the edges so that the nut goes through the bolts. And this is just the assembly so I'm just dry fitting it with the uh, seat supports in place and then trying out the coach bolt to make sure that everything aligns perfectly. I just repeated the same step across on all the sides. So basically you drill the holes and then you hammer in the coach bolts in and then you put the washer and the nut and tighten it up with the socket ratchet.
and that's how it all looks with the seed supports installed on it. So here I'm going to install some side supports which is basically a 2x4 timber with some profiles routed at the edges on it. So I'm just pre-drilling some holes and then it's going to get attached with some M10 150mm quartz screws. And this will be on both the sides of the paragola. So with that, now we have all the posts up from the floor and we have the rear girder and the side supports to hold it in place. The next step is to put the next girder onto the rear post. So for this I am marking off a line which is parallel to the rearmost girder. This is so that I can attach this sacrificial 2x4 post which will hold the girder in place. And once that's done I attached a few clamping blocks onto it to hold the entire thing tightly. So with the clamps it will apply a lot of pressure on the girder so that it forms perpendicular or rather flush with the posts. The next step is to drill some pilot holes on the holes over here and this is so that we can drive in the next set of coach screws into it to hold this girder tightly against the post. And once that's done I went ahead and removed the sacrificial 2x4 timber. Here I'm just installing these, uh, the curved seats which I made and these are epoxy filled coin bench and I got a separate video on how I made this. So now is the time to actually install the seats in here because once you have the front girders and the rafters you cannot get this stuff because it's been designed like that. Now for the front two girders I need to make a template out of 2x4 timber. So here I'm spacing off the width of my posts and making this frame. Then we carried the frame across the posts and inserted it and then I screwed it all in place. Now this is the third girder so we lifted this on to the support and then I used some decking screws to hold this in place. Now the plan is to use M10 coach bolts so because of that I'm going to use some 12mm uh, drill bit and then I'm going to mark the positions on the girder onto the post. So to start off with I'm using the drill bit which is around 150mm long. So I'm going to change that and then use a 300mm length one so that the actual drill actually penetrates to the girder onto the post onto the other side. So I got this 300mm length bits from Amazon and they were a bit cheap and it started getting blunt and hot very quickly so I used a dash of WD-40 to cool it down. And now for the last and the fourth girder. So we lifted this and placed it on top of the support. And then I used some temporary coach screws to hold that all in place. Now the plan is to use the 220 coach bolts all through it so I clamp the whole thing tight and hammer the coach bolts in and then use a washer and the nut on the other side and then use the socket ratchet to just tighten it up. On the other side I noticed that the height was a bit low so I used some playing cards to raise the height up. So all the posts got two sets of coach bolts to hold it all in place. And once I finished with all that, I started removing this temporary support for the front girders. And now for the stress test. Well, it looks fine. The post didn't move, so I think it's a job well done. The next step is to cut the four posts on the front to size. So for that, I used a spare melamine and then mark the size of the post and then used a circular saw and then cut out the slot. Once that's done, I placed it on top of all the posts and then used a circular saw which will give me around an inch and a half length and then I went ahead and used a circular saw to cut through it and the places where the teeth didn't sink in, I went with my hand saw and finished the job off. To protect the freshly cut edges, I spray painted it black and I used two to three coats of it and then I went ahead and used some water repellent seal on it as well.
and now it's time to install the rafters and there are 14 of them so the idea is place it on top of the girders and slot all the notches in the correct place and they all get screwed in place so let me explain on how I'm going to fix the rafter on the girder so at the rear I'm going to use this black coach screws which are 100 mm long and 6.7 mm thick so I'll drive in using an impact driver through the edge and the tip of these screws will go into the girders. So to do that, I first count a sink around one to two centimeters in. And then I pre-drill the hole with a four mm drill bit. And then with an impact driver and with the correct attachment, I just screw the whole thing in place. And this is really rigid and it's not going to budge anywhere. And now I'm just toe screwing it here on the front of the rafters onto the girders. The plan is to drive the screws onto both the girders at an angle. So to do that, first you drill a pilot hole and then using your impact driver, drive in the screws. In this case, I'm using 65 mm decking screws. And now it's just rinse and repeat. So I just repeated the whole procedure again on all the 14 girders. And finally, all the 14 rafters are now installed. And I really like the look through this drone footage. And then I pull down the seats and install that with some galvanized L plates. So now it's the final bit which is installing the 2x2 cross beams on top of the rafters. So the 2x2 cross beams will sit exactly on the notches on these rafters. And for this I'm going to first pre-drill it. And then countersink the holes. And then drive in 65mm coach screws. This entire cross beam structure will give it kind of like a honeycomb structure which will give the roof its rigidity. Now because the top is exposed to the elements, I went ahead and I used some brown silicon sealant to cover up all the screw holes. And with that, this build is now complete.
hope this video was useful in some aspects and if you like what you see please consider giving me a thumbs up and there will be more projects coming up I'm planning to build a composite deck and a fish pond as well just next to the paragola so please consider subscribing and thanks for watching